Chapter 1. A Hero's Welcome The sun was setting over the city of Chicago as a black caddy, followed by two Denali's, pulled into the driveway of the Forbes mansion. The impressive structure loomed tall and grand, its white marble exterior gleaming in the last rays of sunlight. A black-suited security guard opened the door, and out stepped a well-suited, young, and handsome man. This was Roman Forbes, the only child of Mr. David and Mrs. Rosemary Forbes, returning home after completing his studies at Harvard Law School. As Roman greeted his parents, a young woman watched from a distance. Her name was Nadia, and she was a servant in the Forbes household. Despite her status, she couldn't help but feel a special connection to Roman, even though this was the first time she had ever seen him. She quickly suppressed her feelings, knowing that as a servant, she could never hope to be anything more than that in his eyes. Roman made his way inside the house, eager to freshen up after his long journey. As he entered his room, he realized that he didn't have a fresh towel. Just as he was about to call for one, Nadia appeared at his door, holding a stack of crisp, white towels. He looked at her, surprised, and asked, What's your name? Nadia, sir, she replied. It's Roman, you can call me Roman, he said, smiling at her. But Mr. David will not like it, sir, Nadia replied, a hint of apprehension in her voice. I know, but I don't really care. I love him, but I am my own man and I have my own rules, Roman told her, his smile still in place. Nadia couldn't help but grin at his words. Okay then, Mr. Roman, she said. Just Roman, Nadia, he corrected her. Okay, just Roman, she replied, still smiling ear to ear. As Nadia left the room, Roman couldn't help but feel a sense of intrigue about this young woman. He had always known that his family had servants, but he had never paid much attention to them. But there was something about Nadia that caught his attention. He couldn't quite put his finger on it, but he knew he wanted to get to know her better. Over the next few days, Roman and Nadia's paths crossed frequently. He would find excuses to be in the same room as her, and they would strike up conversations whenever they could. Roman, Nadia, I've been meaning to ask you, how did you fix that vase that was broken? It looks brand new. Nadia, oh, that was nothing. I just have a knack for fixing things. I've always been fascinated by how things work. Roman, really? I've always been fascinated by that too. Nadia, really? That's so interesting. I love fixing things. Roman, well, I'd be happy if you teach me how to fix things. To his surprise, he found that they had a lot in common. They both loved to read, and they shared a passion for music. Roman, Nadia, I've noticed that you're always reading. What are you reading now? Nadia, I'm reading a book about the history of medicine. It's fascinating to see how far we've come in terms of understanding the human body and how to heal it. I always wanted to be a doctor, but after the death of my father, everything changed. Roman, I'm sorry to hear about your father. I'm here for you Nadia. And the book, it sounds really interesting. I've always been curious about the medical field too. Maybe we can discuss it more next time. Nadia, I'd like that. It's always nice to have someone to talk to about things you're passionate about. Roman, Nadia, I've been meaning to ask you, what's your favorite music? Nadia, I love classical music, it's so soothing and it takes me to another place. Roman, really? I'm a big fan of classical music too. We should listen to some together sometime. Nadia, that would be lovely. I'd like that very much. Roman, have you ever thought about studying further? You're so intelligent and curious. 
Nadia, I would love to, but I don't have the means to do so. Roman, well, I could help you with that. I could help you find scholarships or grants. You're too talented to let financial constraints hold you back. Nadia, thank you, Roman. That's very kind of you. I'll definitely consider it.